Right, um, last one, last one. Come on, guys. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. We begin, I just want to congratulate Harvey. I'd like to thank Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. And then Harvey Weinstein. And Harvey Weinstein. Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Every thank you, Harvey Weinstein. I want to thank Harvey and Bob Weinstein. My agent, Kevin Uvane, and God, Harvey Weinstein. I love this next presenter. He's so cool. Um, he's the star of Iron Man. Two girls and a guy. Wonder Boys. Sorry, these porn films. What? <laughs> kiss, kiss, bang, bang. <laughs> Bowfinger. Really? Yeah. Up the Academy. Come on. He has done all those films, but many of you in this room probably know him best from such facilities as the Betty Ford Clinic and Los Angeles County Jail. Please welcome Robert Downey Jr. Aside from the fact uh, that it's been hugely mean-spirited with mildly sinister undertones, I'd say the vibe of the show is pretty good so far, wouldn't you? The world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. He was also in the movie Cats, but no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? <laughs> But Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play, because she... I can't do this next joke. <laughs> because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her... <laughs> furble, furble. She's old school. Um, it's the last time, who cares? <laughs> but as I say, I'm going to be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously. <laughs> now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. What a year she's had. She became a role model for trans people everywhere, showing great bravery in breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers, but... <laughs> I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously. Now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. What a year she's had. She became a role model for trans people everywhere, showing great bravery in breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers, but... <laughs> you can't have everything, can you? Also not nominated, I love you Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Probably. Our next presenter uh, is the star of the hilarious comedy The Martian. died. Right. <laughs> He's also the only person who Ben Affleck hasn't been unfaithful to. Please welcome Matt Damon. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what can I say about our next two presenters? The first is an actor, producer, writer, and director whose movies have grossed over three and a half billion dollars at the box office. He's won two Academy Awards and three Golden Globes for his powerful and varied performances 
starring in such films as Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Apollo 13, and Saving Private Ryan. The other is Tim Allen. Well, you know, like, like many of you, we recall back when Ricky Gervais was a slightly chubby but very kind co comedian. Yeah. Neither of which is he now. It is an honor to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. Actors. They're just, they're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, Imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. <laughs> He'd be all over the place. We'd go, oh, where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know, Hugh, with the aid of coaches and stuff, can eventually learn his lines while saving lives. He's a genius. <laughs> How could you replace Kiefer Sutherland in 24? I'd love to see a real anti-terrorist agent try and defuse a bomb in a busy train station in one hour. <laughs> Some of those scenes, by the way, where Kiefer grabs someone and beats them to a pulp, they weren't even in the script. Um, <laughs> the director just said, keep rolling, we'll work it into the... <laughs> but actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood, they are loved the world over, because they're recognisable. You can be anywhere. You could be in the third world, okay, and you get a glimpse of a Hollywood star, and it makes you feel better, okay? You could be a little, a little child, a little Asian child, with no possessions and no money, but you get a, you see a picture of Angelina Jolie, and you think, oh, mummy. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Let's get on with it before NBC replaced me with Jay Leno. Um, <laughs> no one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win. Everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this. OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert, um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> Our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. This is... She's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always vogue. She's a material girl. And she's just like a virgin. <clears throat> Please welcome Madonna. If I'm still just like a virgin, Ricky, then why don't you come over here and do something about it? I haven't kissed a girl in a few years. On TV. Just tell me what you like All day, all night I'll keep you satisfied Come to my place Trip down and take a shot All day, all night I'll keep you satisfied Apple roared into the, the TV game with a morning show A superb drama, yeah A superb drama about the importance of dignity and doing the right thing made by a company that runs sweatshops in China. So, well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, 
If you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your God. And so, it's already three hours long. There were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, <laughs> well, the excellent Spotlight has been nominated. Yeah. The, uh, the Catholic Church are furious about the film as it exposes the fact that 5% of all their priests have repeatedly molested children and been allowed to continue to work without punishment. Roman Polanski called it the best date movie ever. <laughs> well, the Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, look, it was. My, my, it was great. Uh, long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Um, you probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's, pay... <laughs> Let's pay him hundreds of millions of dollars and put him in every movie. If you can't be bothered to go to the cinema to see Steve in action, then um, just watch him every Thursday here on NBC.